choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. So thanks for joining us today. I'm Janet Petro, director of the Kennedy Space Center, and I'm joined today virtually and in person with others who have also had the honor of serving the Kennedy Space Center in the same role. Allow me to introduce our guests today, although they really don't need an introduction. With me here in the studio is Jay Honeycutt, who served as a sixth director, and also Bill Parsons, who was the ninth director, and thanks to our future of work environment, we've been able to bring in virtually Roy Bridges, the seventh director, and finally, Bob Cabana, who is KSC's 10th director. Thank you all for joining the panel today. As we celebrate our 60th anniversary, we hope those at KSC are able to walk away with a better understanding of our history and the leaders who have made this spaceport what it is today. So Roy, um, let me ask you, I've heard you were one of the first people to envision KSC becoming a spaceport back in the day, and you did a major reorganization at KSC back in 2000. Can you share what was driving your thoughts and planning during that time and how you feel about where KSC is today, being the multi-user spaceport that it is? Yeah, that was something that happened um, while we were having a, an off-site over a couple of days, I went for an early morning run on the beach, and we were looking for some vision of what KSC might become in the future. And it just occurred to me that, gosh, we're just going to be one of many spaceports. What can we do to facilitate that? What can we do in terms of research and development to make that more possible? And today, of course, there's more than a dozen spaceports in the U.S. and many more totally around the world. So I think that um, doing that and thinking about it, this almost got me fired, thinking about a multi-user spaceport. Uh, the Air Force wanted to get rid of me because they didn't want to lose control of their land and station and everything like that. But you see today what what it has become under the leadership of people who followed me. And that is that we not only have multi-users there of our spaceport, but we have also an industrial park that people thought I was crazy to advocate. And hundreds of jobs. 
So it's great for the KSC and it's great for the community and it's great for, to advance our um, space capabilities. You, you know, Roy. Thank you. Roy, I was a GS-15 back then when you were doing that and I was helping other people. I was in small groups helping other people come up with some of the concepts and visions for that. And I can honestly tell you, we couldn't see what it would look like down the road, but what an amazing concept you had and thought you had and vision you had. And then, you know, really, we needed Bob Cabana to kind of get into that place where we didn't have anything flying. We didn't have a human spaceflight program really going at the time. And he had to figure out other things to do, and he was able to implement a lot of those points in that vision to make what happened happen. So it was, you know, it's, it's interesting that you go all the way from 2000 to 2022 and you realize that in 22 years, all the things we did, that was, that's just absolutely amazing. Great, great vision though. Yeah, I think uh, Roy, you were probably uh, ahead of your time. And then I think uh, like Bill, you said, after the uh, fly out of the shuttle program, the opportunity and the um, environment within the commercial uh, industry allowed um, uh, Bob to, to kind of make that uh, vision uh, a reality. Um, so Bill, let me ask you, as you were uh, leading Kennedy, as we were gearing up for the Constellation program, and then the shuttle program had already been approved to come to an end, Constellation, which was a precursor to the Artemis program, was beginning its development, and the Orion spacecraft was designed for Constellation. How does it feel for you to see Orion atop SLS so close to taking its maiden voyage around the moon on the Artemis program, and, and does it take you back? Well, you know, I was doing shuttle return to flight when Sean O'Keefe kind of came up with the vision, a very simple vision is complete the International Space Station, go back to the moon, and on to Mars. And that was an easy concept, but it, we didn't know how we were going to do that. Um, the Constellation program came around and you thought, well, okay, this is going to be the first steps that we have. And before you know it, it's canceled and, and you're not sure where, where we're going from there. I'm amazed the, that SLS got going, that they funded it, that they've kept it funded for the, as long as they have. And now the Artemis is sitting out on the launch pad with Orion sitting on top. And, and I was just talking to some of the folks that are, uh, that are doing the wet dress rehearsal and, and they're just, they're this close. They're this close to getting this uh, rocket off, this, off the pad. And, and I tell you, it's gonna be amazing when we do. And it's the beginning of another historical uh, time in, in NASA where we're gonna be going back to the moon and on to Mars. It's, it's again, one of those uh, moments in time where we'll all look back and remember. Yep, absolutely, and I uh, hear the excitement uh, uh, from the workforce uh, here today about having um, that vehicle at the pad, looking forward to a, a successful uh, wet dress, and then, and then the launch, as you said, is gonna be very exciting. So Bob, I think you were uh, in charge when Constellation was canceled, and that really was not a very fun time uh, in the agency's history. You also had the distinction of being the longest serving director in Kennedy history. Your tenure spanned the end of the shuttle program and a transition from a government-only facility to the multi-user spaceport. So what was your philosophy in leading the center through one of the biggest changes in its history? So, you know, first off, an amazing team. Just absolutely privileged to have led such an amazing team and build that team. You know, I don't know if you remember, but when I got to uh, KSC in uh, October of 2008, we still had uh, 12 shuttle missions we had to fly out. And my first all hands, I said, the shuttle program is going to end. We have to start planning for our future. And, and nobody wanted to hear that. Everybody hates change, but we can't get better without change. And we had mm -hmm. to start then. And I think the hardest thing that we had to do was get everybody to own that vision for the future of what we could become. You know, Roy had it back, you know, eight, 10 years before I got to, uh, to KSC, but then being able to actually implement it, having that fortune function of the shuttle coming to an end and then can constellation being canceled. I mean, man, morale was at an all time low at the end of the shuttle program. I mean, we laid off, 
we went from a workforce of 15,000 down to 7,500 in less than two years. And it, it was a tough time. Mm -hmm. But I, I think yeah. having that team come together, having a vision for the future and clearly communicating that vision to the team. And then as we iterated it every year, refining it and moving forward to try and implement it. But I think the, the key thing there is, you know, it comes down to uh, taking care of your people, servant leadership, putting the welfare of the team yeah. above your own, communicating a clear vision for the future and getting the team to own that vision. You can't direct <clears> it. <throat> the team has to own it if you're really going to implement mm -hmm. change and then then iterating it uh, year by year moving forward. So, you know, I, I guess the, the, the thing I would say is it comes down to uh, getting the right people and the right jobs, uh, providing them clear direction on what you want to have happen, letting them own that, making sure they have the resources uh, to be successful and then and turn them loose, put their welfare above your own and have a, have a clear vision of what you want to accomplish. Well, and, and, and let me add, let me add something there. You know, one of the things that I I know Jay, Roy, Bob, all of us know is that you're a member of this community. And one of the hardest things in the world is to go to the Publix and somebody walk up to you and say, when am I, when is my job coming to an end? When am I going to get laid off? <laughs> and, and I tell you, I, I didn't have the, I didn't, I don't know if I had the courage to keep answering that question and for Bob to come in and do that and, and, close down the shuttle program and move to the next um, what whatever the future was was coming that was amazing because um, it is not an easy thing to do to to lay off 7500 people I mean my goodness that that's difficult absolutely thank you for that uh, 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 bill and it was it was a challenging uh, it was a challenging time and I can remember also uh, at the grocery store, people uh, would say, wait, I thought NASA went away, or I thought Kennedy was uh, closed. And so how, how you kept that uh, messaging that, no, there was a bright future out there and working towards that bright future. Um, Roy, let me go to you. So you led KSC, KSC through the loss and the recovery of Columbia. What are some of the things that have stayed with you regarding those the challenges of those days and the months of leading KSC through a and another emotional period of dealing with the loss, but learning and moving forward. That was a very, very tough time. And um, I spent a lot of time walking around to all of the shops and people there were mourning and their feelings were really right out there on their sleeve. I mean, you know, for example, I went to the shop where they were sewing the fabric, the heat, heat shielding fabric on the shuttle, and they felt like they had had some role in causing the Columbia to go down. And I told them, I said, look, we will get to the bottom of this. And we did. We had an amazing team from KSC supplemented by folks from many federal agencies and other centers that went out and basically found all the pieces of Columbia. And we brought those pieces home and we laid them out in the floor of the hangar out at the SLF and found out conclusively exactly what happened and of course you all know the answer I won't get into that but I thought as a healing measure after we had finished all of the recovery I had all of the people come out to that hangar <clears throat> on buses and walk through that wreckage so that they could see that we brought Columbia home and we learn from it. And we put those pieces up in the VAB, well organized so that we could support research and other endeavors in future years. And I got credit a lot of this, our leader of our team was Mike Leinbach. <clears throat> Did a great job and he wrote up a lot of the details of this in a book called uh, Bringing Columbia Home. A very emotional time. And uh, just to cap this off, 
we had a memorial service for the people we lost on Columbia out at the SLF. A lot of people from the center as well as, uh, you know, even the governor of Florida and all the other dignitaries. And I remember that morning, the weather was a little shaky. And of course, I had the world's best weather officer, uh, John Maduro. And I got his feeling on, hey, is it going to rain? Do we need to do this inside? Because I really wanted to do it on the runway, to get the full effect of this. And I finally decided we put on the runway, come whatever. And I'm sitting there and we're just getting started and I'm in the audience facing the governor of Florida and a big raindrop hit me right on top of my head and I kind of flinched. And governor of Florida got a big smile and I just put my hands up It you know, it is what it is. Then at the exact time that Columbia was supposed to land, Four T-38s came out of the fog right down the runway and pulled up into a missing man formation. And I'll tell you, very tough to keep my composure at that moment. Hey, thank you for uh, sharing that, Roy. I know to this day, um, members of the workforce proudly talk about um, being a part of that recovery operation. Um, and also, uh, as you know, the uh, Columbia Room is still open, and there's a lot of interest, and we have a lot of, um, even our, our commercial partners uh, want to go and kind of walk through and um, learn that lesson, you know, reflect on the job that they have uh, at hand, um, particularly in launching uh, humans to space. So uh, thank you for um, sharing that. Let me see. Hey, Janet, I'd like to chip in a little bit on that. So, uh, you know, I look back on it, that, that was just a tremendously hard time. And at the time we lost Columbia, I was the director of uh, flight crew operations at uh, JSC. And I'll, I will never forget being out at midfield waiting for Columbia to come home and, and not having them come home. And I did not realize how much that impacted me and affected me uh, from that time forward. But one of the things that I am so proud of as the uh, director of KSC is forever remembered and doing forever remembered over in the Atlantis facility and honoring uh, the crews of Challenger in Columbia and having that flight hardware displayed and, and seeing the recovery and telling the story of all the crew members and what happened and how we rose above it. And when the families came and toured that, that, that brought healing to me. And I, I just, what uh, Roy, the way we treated Columbia, it was so different from Challenger and having it uh, having it secured in the uh, vehicle assembly building and bringing people through and helping folks learn from it. I think that was really important. So my hat's off to you sir, for helping make that happen. And I, I just forever remember it is, is really special. Hey, hey Janet, I got, a, I got a question for you, you know, um, we went through a, a pretty phenomenal transition together from the end of the shuttle to uh, being this multi-user spaceport that KSC is today. And it, it's pretty amazing, the launch rate down there. What, what do you think about this increasing launch rate? And what do you see for the future of KSC beyond where we are now? Well, thank you, Bob, for that question. Uh, I'll start off by saying we are super busy at uh, KSC in a multi-user spaceport. Um, as you mentioned, we had uh, 31 launches last year. And as, as you all know, we support every single launch, whether it's on our property or on the uh, property of the uh, Space Force across uh, the river. Um, so we had 31 last year. We have 67 this year, and it is. Um, I, I firmly believe that within the next couple of years, we will be over 100 launches a year. Which you know, a couple, even five years ago, would have been unthinkable to think we would be supporting that many um, launches. But we have a whole bunch of partners with a whole bunch of uh, interest in uh, launching from our. Uh, multi-user spaceports. So our job is to make sure that we're supporting all of them, whether it's uh, the NASA programs or our commercial partners um, in doing their um, launch and processing operations um, successfully. What I really see happening um, even today is a consolidation of a lot of those uh, uh, processing operations uh, at the Kennedy Space Center. 
a lot of companies are thinking that they, if they can bring their processing operations closer to the launch head, um, then it becomes um, very uh, much more efficient than if they process uh, elements uh, uh, and then transport them down to the Kennedy Space Center. So you'll see um, Blue Origin, um, I think it was uh, uh, Roy mentioned uh, an industrial park uh, outside Exploration Park. They, they have a number of manufacturing facilities that dominate the landscape. And uh, within uh, our controlled space uh, here down at Roberts Road, SpaceX is doing the mm -hmm. same thing with their uh, Falcon 9 refurbishment, their fairing recovery, and their Starship operations um, that they are moving here, consolidating um, their processing operations here on our center. And Artemis is doing the same thing. There's a, a huge interest in the SLS program and other elements of the Artemis uh, program to bring them here to the Space Center uh, and process them here um, instead of at the remote location. So as we go forward, that's what I see more uh, and more of is a consolidation of operations uh, here. And our job, it's a, a big job still, is uh, to support uh, and ensure that um, our NASA programs are successful um, and we rely on our commercial partners as part of the uh, Artemis program going forward. So we've got to be successful uh, supporting all of that. Okay, so um, thank you, Bob, for that question. Um, so let me ask this. Uh, when you assumed the position of center director, did anybody give you one nugget of wisdom that helped set the stage for uh, a new role and, and leadership? What wisdom did you pass on to your successor successor and bill i'm going to ask you and i'm going to keep you honest because uh you know i was there <laughs> <laughs> yes you were you know probably i've gotten it first of all let me take the, this occasion to to say what an honor and privilege it is to be here with these center directors um and former center directors and center director of the kennedy space center um not only have they been my mentors throughout my career uh, they've been my friends and they, they've been my colleagues. And, and I can just tell you, each and every one of them have provided me with advice and guidance throughout my life and throughout my career. Um, really, really tell you that, that I, I really appreciate each and every one of you and all the things you've accomplished and helped me accomplish throughout this, uh, this time. The, the one thing I would say is Jay Honeycutt probably had more influence over me than most. And, and I spent a lot of time with Jay. Jay asked me to be his management intern, and he told me at the time, he said, Bill, this is a, maybe a six-month assignment. If it's four months, don't get your feelings hurt. If it's eight months, don't get the big head. And so, uh, you know, that was kind of the first part of that. It turned out that at that period of time in his career, Jay was getting ready to be asked to take over from Bob Crippen and be the center director. And Jay asked me to stay on a little bit longer. So I spent a, a, a long period of time with Jay getting to watch how NASA worked and the inner workings of the leadership of NASA. He introduced me to some of the finest people I'll ever, ever know and, and, and people that helped my career from that point forward. But I, I think the biggest thing I learned from Jay was tell me how you can, not why you can't. And I, I think we all, there, a lot of his management interns, his Bubba's, all can say that one because we all remember that was beat into us is tell me how you can not why you can't it might be that he can't afford it or we can't uh we don't have enough time to do it but there's a way to do it just tell me the way to do it and then i'll decide if if we can do if we do it or if we don't do it and so we approached a lot of problems and a lot of situations uh with that philosophy in mind so that that was the one piece that I got. Yeah, the yes if uh, answer instead of uh, no, we can't do it. It's uh, leaning forward. So, Jay, uh, any nuggets of wisdom uh, that you got from mentors or you want to pass on? Well, my biggest mentor was uh, George Abbey out in Houston, who was the director of uh, the Johnson Center for a number of years and who I've served as a management intern for. And George... I, I learned more from him than anybody else I ever worked for. I, tr I tried to implement some of it. I wasn't capable of implementing all of the things that he was able to do, but but uh, if I needed help, I pretty much got it from him. Thank you. And Roy, how about you? Well, the thing that stuck with me 
the, the most is a little saying, if you're not successful on the first try, try again. And that was uh, really, I, I, I saw that in my life because I wanted to be an aviator, I wanted to be a test pilot, I wanted to be an astronaut. And at pilot training, my first nine flights, I got a fare, which is just one step above, you know, failing. My 10th flight was a washout check ride. I got an excellent on that ride, and I never looked back. So I think that's true in all of our lives in that we're going to run into some difficult situations, and it may take a couple of tries before we get it right. And of course, as people have already said on uh, here this morning, that it's a team effort. So it's the team getting it right that at the end of the day makes the biggest difference. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. And um, Bob, any uh, nuggets you'd like to add? Well, I, you know, I've been uh, privileged to work uh, for so many uh, great leaders over the years. Um, I think, you know, I look back on some center directors that aren't here, and uh, Force McCartney was someone that uh, was really looked up to uh, when he was leading the Kennedy Space Center. And I, I think one of the biggest things that I took away from what I saw with Forrest and what I've gotten from other leaders is that you really need to get out of that corner office. You can't run a center. You can't be a leader sitting in meetings all the time. You, you have to get out and meet the people. You have to talk to them. You have to allow them to show you what they're doing. You have to genuinely care about the health and welfare of the team that you're privileged to lead. And I, I think that more than anything, uh, I, I hope, you know, that's how I'm remembered at, uh, at KSC that uh, I genuinely cared about the team and helped us move forward under some difficult circumstances. And I go along with what Roy said is in, in judging people, the people that work for you, not everybody's going to be successful on the first try. And the true measure of a person is not the mistakes that he or she makes. It's how do they respond to them? Do they let them mire them down in the muck or do they rise above them and go on to do greater, greater things? And uh, you know, yeah, you got to be, you got to challenge folks, okay? And there's a difference between somebody who makes a mistake and somebody who's willfully negligent. But people are going to make mistakes. Make sure that they make mistakes on little things that they learn from and that they, uh, when they're in charge of something big and it's really expensive, that they've learned on those smaller projects so that they can do well on the larger ones. But, uh, you know, be, be understanding also. I think the biggest mistake I ever made was telling Jay Honeycutt I could drink red wine all night long. <laughs> Did you prove it? No. George and I proved him to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, hey, yeah, Jay, could I just jump? Yeah, Could I ahead. say one thing here? So uh, Bob mentioned Forrest McCartney, and Forrest was still at KSC. We had an office in a little trailer down at Cape Canaveral and every couple of weeks I would go down and have lunch with Forrest and let him tell me everything I was doing wrong. That was always very, very helpful to me. I always really enjoyed Forrest. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Roy. I, I get, uh, so my boss is still Bob. He was it before and he is now. So I get, I get that uh, same feeling, uh, but a lot of, <laughs> lot of support there. Um, let me see. So Roy, uh, you are the only center director that I'm aware of that has a piece of infrastructure named after you. And I'm told that when the team was seeking approval at the agency level to have something named after you, uh, they were told something to the effect of, as long as the name ends in the word bridge, you are approved for this. So do you have any thoughts or comments on that? <laughs> Okay, well, you know, this started out as somewhat of a joke. Um, I'm at my going away party, and all of a sudden, Jim Kennedy, who followed me as center director, sorry, I can't be here today, announced this uh, naming of the bridge 
over Banana River after me. And I thought it was kind of a joke, but then they went out and put a sign up. And, you know, <laughs> since, <laughs> since then, a lot of people said, hey, I just went over your bridge. Now, the amazing thing is about <clears throat> two weeks ago, <clears throat> I went down to my hometown of Gainesville, Georgia. And can you imagine after more than 50 years, the town of Gainesville, Georgia had me down to unveil a street sign. So there in, in Georgia, there's now a Major General Roy Bridges Boulevard. <laughs> it sounds like a really big street, but it's actually a really dinky little street connecting a major thoroughfare to to a Georgia Exploration Academy, which is kind of associated with uh, NASA's STEM program. So, yeah, this is really special to me, and I will tell you that <clears throat> I know it didn't work out for more than the first 10 years, but, but uh, working with Cape Canaveral and the Air Force to have a contractor manage the infrastructure of both KSC and Cape Canaveral really was um, um, uh, amazingly helpful because we were going through this existential uh, <clears throat> experience of trying to go from 2,500 people, civil servants, down to 1,490 in a few years. And I needed to save our best and brightest for the future. And, <clears throat> you know, Managing infrastructure was not the most important thing for that future. So the first day of, of this contract of bridging the river, so to speak, of KSC and Cape Canaveral, we hired 500 fewer people. And the NASA administrator, Dan Golden, <clears throat> was so skeptical of this concept that he said, look, <clears throat> as an incentive, if you can do this, I'll let you keep all the money in the budget that you save. And we saved over $70 million over that, <clears throat> excuse me, that period of time that we were able to invest in strategic projects at KSC to help our people see that we have a future and we can do some great things for this nation. Well, thank you for that, and I will tell you uh, the the uh, your namesake bridge, uh, the Roy D. Bridges Bridge, is signed still there, and um, it it's not going to be small and dinky. We are going to uh, eventually uh, make it a lot bigger and start bringing some uh, payload uh, payloads uh, uh, and heavy lifting things over. We've been um, talking with the uh, Space Force about that because a number of our partners want to do that. So we'll see. It may become a pretty important bridge uh, in the future. So um, let me see, uh, let me ask a question. What's a standout moment from your career that makes you feel the most proud? And um, Jay, let me start with you. Uh, well, as old as I am, I had a lot of them, but uh, I, I think there's, a, there's, there's one thing that, that's not very well known about the Kennedy Space Center that's probably as important as anything it ever done it's ever done and and that is when when space station was was being built back in the late 90s it was a mess and and george abbey and others out in houston were were trying to get the contractors all pulled together and 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 get the hardware in in line to uh to meet any of the goals they couldn't get the node out of uh huntsville they couldn't get anything out of uh the people out in California. So George called and uh, and he said, hey, I got a lot of people out here that know this hardware, but they only know it as a schematic. You, you, Your guys actually know hardware as hardware. How about loaning me some of them and, uh, and uh, let them go into these factories and see if they can figure out what's going on? So I called Tip to loan over to my office and I made somewhat of a mistake I told him he had 15 first round draft choices <laughs> to go pick from on the center and and go see if they can do that. First one he got was Bill, then he got Nicole Scott, Scott then he got Bill Dowdell, Don Shrivel, and, and several others uh, that, that I can't remember to mention. And they went into the, 
to the factories and started pointing out to, to, to the people out in Houston in the program office what, what was wrong with all these factories and why the hard work couldn't get out there. And today, George Abbey will tell you that that was perhaps the most significant thing that was able to be accomplished to get the space station built, flown, and assembled. And people talk about that still to this day of uh, going back to the factories and doing that. And I know, Bill, if you wanted to jump in here and well, talk I, about I, that experience. I'd just say that he picked some of the, well, first of all, picking Tip to lead that was the best thing he could have ever done. And then Tip went and picked uh, 15 first round draft choices. And I can honestly tell you that when you're surrounded by excellence, surrounded by that kind of talent, it's hard not to be successful. And we, we, were, we were sent out to do a job and we were supported tremendously from upper level management. I mean, between Jay and George Abbey and, and all those folks, we had complete 100% support and it was the reason that we were able to do that. I, I'll tell you, um, we, we all remember that as some of our biggest accomplishments that we, we ever had. And, 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 I, and, and go ahead, Bob, I'm sorry. I, I just got to say, so I, I remember, you know, that first flight. And if you all remember, the whole process was going to be ship and shoot. Build it, ship it to KSC, shoot it to space, and it was all going to work. And uh, we ended up doing the Mission Essential Integration Test, MEIT, down to KSC. And I remember working hours uh, down there on the node, testing that software, finding issues that they never found in the testing at Boeing in, uh, in Houston, in the software facility. And uh, I tell you, had, it, had we not done that, MEIT down at KSC with the folks integrating the hardware down there with the uh, emulator for the FDB using the real computers and software on the node, uh, I'm not, I don't think we'd have been successful. And I, I credit what uh, Tiff and your team at KSC did uh, making sure that when we got on orbit and we activated the ISS, I'll tell you, nobody was more surprised than me when I sent those commands on the computer and everything worked exactly as it was supposed to. And it was all due to that MEIT testing at KSC. Still the greatest engineering feat, putting that uh, ISS together, right, and having it all come together uh, uh, up in space. So anybody else want to add anything to that, Jin Jay? Yeah, Janet, Janet, this is Roy. Go ahead, Roy. I just want to say that that... I agree 100% with what's been said here, that I think the success of the ISS over its now more than 20 year lifetime was uh, the MEIT and how Tip Talon and, and all of his uh, superstars pulled that together. I'm just most impressed by that. And I would just like to say uh, one other thing as an organizational leader. The other thing that I'm really impressed about KSC is how the launch services program, um, which came down to KSC while I was the center director, and their, their phenomenal success over the years to me is also one of the standouts of what KSC and its people can do. Thank you. And, and Roy, I, I would add to that, that is a model for how an organization, a program can be put together and, and run. Um, seriously, the LSP program has so much to offer to the other programs that are here at KSC and, and throughout NASA, and I think the, there's some emulation that should occur. There. You know, they, they really were mm -hmm. the first uh, commercial uh, to make use of uh, commercial uh, partners and do it in a different, uh, acquire things in a different way. And um, I, I do believe they're one of the crown jewels in this agency. And they, uh, you know, as you said, uh, still remain so today. And, and they're, they're really world renowned as uh, launch vehicle experts, which uh, make us uh, really, really proud here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm gonna, um, we've been talking about the KSC workforce. Uh, I'm gonna ask you guys, what is the most important advice that you would share with our workforce uh, today here at KSC? And I'll start with um, Jay. Well, I think it's <laughs> to share with what the workforce today is pretty much to share with uh, uh, what was shared with them all, all through, uh, certainly through shuttle and, and potentially through the 
days before that, and that's you know, do, do your work, do it, do it right. Uh, remember who you're working for, because you're because you're working for the people that are going to be flying in this thing, and it, it, you're every single one of you is responsible for the success of the of the mission. So keep your ears open, your mouth shut, and do your job. <laughs> That's a little hard in today's uh, workforce, but uh, I, I get the uh, take the point. Uh, Bill, how about you? Well, I, you know, you I think Jay just said it, but I also think. You know, one of the things that we have here at KSC, one of the things this whole workforce has is integrity. And and that integrity goes over, when they, when they make a mistake, they, they have to be able to step up and say, I made a mistake, and let people know. And I think that, that that's one thing that we need to keep within this workforce, is that integrity of our work and what we do, and to make sure that, that everyone um, takes that seriously, because that is what keeps those the the men and women that ride in our rockets safe but it also ensures that we get those multi-billion dollar satellites in space properly as well so again yeah it's a part of our ksc culture to have that integrity and it's one of the things i'm uh, most proud of um let me see uh, uh roy anything uh any advice you'd give to the workforce well i just want to say what i always tell folks is uh, both individually and as an organization, go for it. Be all that you can be. Because people working together sometimes don't realize what they can rise to, what they can do for this nation. And I think over the years, KSC has demonstrated that over and over and continue to do so today. I'm so proud of them. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Roy. And Bob, any, uh, any advice you'd give? Well, I heartily concur with uh, everything that uh, everyone has said thus far. I'll, I'll throw in one more, and it, it's more a, a leadership thing also. But I would say uh, never say no to an assignment. When your boss asks you to go do something, even if it's something that you don't want to do, you know, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And uh, go off and do your very best at it and learn from it. You know, and I, I've had a few assignments I've been asked to go do that I didn't necessarily want to go do. But I learned from them and they made me better. And uh, I would say don't say no when you're asked to, to go do something. Rise to the occasion and do your very best at it. I have to I have to add to that, Bob. I, I got a call one time from a guy named George Abbey, and he said, uh, can you go, uh, I'd like for you to go do this job at the Johnson Space Center. And I said, George, I, I don't want to move to Houston. And I hung up, and, and he said, okay, and I hung up. And, and then I got a, just minutes later, I get a call from a guy named Jay Honeycutt, and he said, I don't think you understood. That wasn't a question. <laughs> 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 so I moved to the Houston to Houston to work at the Johnson Space Center for Mr. George Abbey, and it was the best thing that I ever did. So, yeah, yeah, getting out of your comfort zone and saying saying yes when uh, maybe you don't want to. Uh, great, great advice. So, so I'm biased. Uh, you know, my my favorite uh, center. I say this uh, without uh, hesitation is the Kennedy Space Center. I love everything about it. The workforce. I think it's the um, not only the biggest physically, but uh, the best. But I know a couple of you have um, also been center directors. Uh, at other centers. So, uh, Bob and Roy, I'm going to put you on the spot and uh, ask you, uh, what's your favorite center that you have been the privilege of being the center director of? So you said Bob first. I guess I got to go first. So what I will say is, you know, in my uh, current position, all our centers play a crucial role in making NASA successful. Oh, Bob, you've and, become uh, way too political. You've been in D.C. too long. <laughs> I... Uh, now, I, I got to say, I, uh, I absolutely love my time at, uh, at KSC. Uh, the mission, uh, I love my time at Stennis. I love my time at JSC and all the centers that I've gotten to work at over the years, uh, TDY and so on. But uh, there's something special about seeing rockets launch into space. And I don't care if there's humans or uh, cargo on them or science missions. You know, when a rocket ship leaves planet Earth, that is a, an amazing event that is emotional. It's sight, sound, feel, it, it's the whole ball of wax. And uh, being able to see that on a regular basis and have a, an integral role 
in making that happen. KSC is a, a special place. All right. Uh, uh, Roy, how about you? Can you see that? <laughs> <Living>. <laughs> Don't forget your days living on the beach and launching rockets from the KSC external relations staff. Yes. That was my motto down there. Um, clearly, uh, throughout, for, across my whole career, and I've been a lot of different places, to, uh, living on the beach and Cocoa Beach and being privileged to be the center director of the KSC was the very, it was my very favorite. And I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just uh, say echo Bob's words about some of the thrills that you get from from being there and doing that is really great. Smoke and fire, thank you. All right, one last question I'm going to ask all of you: um, Can you imagine and share with us what you think KSC will be like in 60 years? And Jay, <laughs> let me start with you. I don't have any idea. <laughs> I mean, when you look at when you look at how much it's changed in the last 60, uh, I, I, I don't even comprehend. I mean, maybe there, maybe there's nobody down here working. Robots are doing everything. You know, you never, I, 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 I don't have enough vision to guess what 60 years from now it's going to be like. But I do know that if it, Kennedy Space Center has got anything to do with it, it's going to be done just right and in a safe manner. Thank you. Bill, how about you? Oh, my goodness. Um, you know, we always seem to come full circle, so I think we'll go back to seeing launches and landings right here at Kennedy and just going into space, doing our job, and coming back right here to, to the Kennedy Space Center like we always have and or like we did in the in the past. So, you know, maybe it's a, it's a spaceport just like Roy Bridges envisioned one day, uh, only more like uh, the Jetsons than I can even imagine. Okay, thank you. Bob? Yeah, I, I will second that. You know, it's hard to predict the future, but I do know that the uh, KSC team is going to play a key role in keeping our nation a, a leader in space. And I, I'm kind of with you. Uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, we are going to have the, the, the spaceport of the future where folks are flying to and from low Earth orbit and beyond, just like you're going into Orlando International. This will be space uh, port uh, interstellar or whatever. But I, I believe that KSC is going to play a key role in our nation's future. And it's because of the people that uh, make it the special place that it is. Thank you. And uh, Roy? Well, let's see, when I graduated from high school, the year was 1961, and that was the um, year when the Russians flew the first person in space. We put Alan Shepard up to the edge of space, and President Kennedy announced that we're going to the moon. So in these next 60 years, and, and probably come sooner than later, we're, we'll be back to the moon and on to Mars, and KSC will be a big part of making those things happen and happen successfully. It's going to be an exciting time, another golden age of our space program. Well, thank you all for those uh, answers. Uh, and let me thank all of you for joining us today as we celebrate 60 years of Kennedy Space Center. I hope that you've enjoyed this discussion and that you were able to gain maybe a little insight and maybe even your own nuggets of wisdom. By honoring the lessons of our past, we are better equipped to lead the future from all of us. Thank you. Happy anniversary, KSC. Happy anniversary, Happy Kennedy, Kennedy Space, Space Center. Center.